Hello everyone and welcome to another video Dvar with uh, Rabbi Chaitovsky here at BMH BJ. Well, everyone knows the news. We have a Triple Crown winner for the first time in almost 37 years. And Jews around the world take pride in the fact that the horse, the owner of the horse that won the Triple Crown, was an Orthodox a Jew born in Egypt who currently lives in Teaneck, New Jersey, is a member of an Orthodox shul there, Mr. Ahmed Zayat and his family, and they justifiably are very happy uh, with uh, their good fortune. Uh, what really got the attention of Jews around the world, as well as others, was the fact that the jockey, Victor Espinoza, uh, decided to pay a visit to the grave of the Lubavitcher Rebbe in Queens, New York, prior to running the race at Belmont. And this raised some very interesting questions among many. Uh, why would a non-Jewish uh, jockey visit the grave of a Jewish leader, the Lubavitcher Rebbe? And is this even proper? Should Jews visit the graves of uh, of those who've come before and ostensibly pray to them. All sorts of very uh, interesting questions, and these are legitimate questions um, for both Jews and those who are not Jewish. Um, let's just also understand that Mr. Espinoza happened to donate his winnings. He's a very charitable man. He donated his winnings to the City of Hope Hospital, uh, and he was very clear that that was his intention to do that all along. And without getting into the propriety or impropriety of visiting the grave of someone, uh, a great leader, and asking them uh, for help or assistance or to pray to them, uh, I just wanted to point out that in this week's Torah portion, something similar seemed to happen. And what am I referring to? I'm referring to the episode of the spies, the episode of, uh, of the scouts that were sent by Moses to, to scout out the land prior to the Israelites crossing the borders. And we all know the famous story. Um, it was the cause of the 38 years of wandering in the desert. Ten of the spies come back with a devastating report about the land, saying giants live there and saying that we'll never overcome them. It's a beautiful land, but we will never overcome it. And only two of the spies, Joshua and Kalev, Kalev ben Yefuneh managed to stand up on behalf of God and Moses and, and encourage the people saying, we can do it, we can get there, and why are we being so scared? It's interesting that the Torah actually emphasizes not so much the role of Joshua, but first emphasizes the role of Kalev. Because from every perspective, we would understand that Joshua would not join in the bad-mouthing of the land of Israel. After all, he was Moses' right-hand man. He was going to be the next leader. He was absolutely loyal to Moses. So we don't really expect him to do anything other than what he did. But the Torah makes it very clear that it was first Kalev who stands up to the people. It was first Kalev who says, God brought us this far, of course he's going to bring us further. What gave Kalev the strength to do this? Well, according to the Midrash, Kalev took a little detour, and Kalev went to visit the city of Hebron. And the city of Hebron was known to have the cave of Machpelah. And Kalev wanted to go visit the grave sites of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their spouses. And he wanted to pray at the grave site of our forefathers, of his forefathers, for assistance. And Rashi even says this based on the verse in the Torah that says, Vaya'alu Banegev, the group ascended to the Negev, Vayavo ad Hevron, he came to Hevron. Why the switch from plural to singular? And Rashi says, he arrived at Hevron, Kalev, Levado, Halachsham. Only Kalev went there. Why? To prostrate himself, al kivre avot, to pray at the gravesite of our forefathers, shelo yehei nisat lachaverav lihiyot biatzatam, so that he would resist the temptation to be part of the conspiracy of the other spies. And later on, when land is doled out, we are told that Kalev was given the area of Hevron because he was there 
And as a reward for his courage, he was promised, you will get the area that you personally set foot on. So Kalev goes to the grave site of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Kalev prays, and it seemed to work. He had the strength to resist. And it's just very interesting that many people are critical of this kind of behavior, but Kalev seemed to do the same thing, and it worked out well for him. Of course, it took another 38 years for it to work out as well for the rest of the Jewish people, because it took another 38 years for them to be gathered at the borders of Israel, because unfortunately, Kalev and Joshua were not as successful in persuading the people to listen to God and to have the faith that they needed. We need more Kalevs and we need more Joshuas. And it's just something for us to think about with this week's Torah portion of Shalach. Shabbat Shalom, and I'll see you in Shul.